we're going to talk about seven different forms of energy. So I divided this page into four sections. I'm going to divide page seven into four sections. I have a wide ruled journal, so each section is six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I just drew a little line to divide it. One, two, three, four, five, six. A dashed line to divide it. And then same thing two more times. Six draw a line, and then six at the end of the page, okay? So the first section wasn't really a form of energy. That was just setting us up um, for the rest of the notes, the law of conservation of energy. These are going to be the forms of energy, okay? Like I said, we're going to use the acronym Mrs. Scent to remember these, okay? So on this page, we're going to talk about the first three um, that include... The first letter is M, R, S. Um, let's get that up a little bit. All right, so the first form of energy that starts with an M is called mechanical energy. So we're going to define that first. Mechanical energy. Okay. If you think about the word mechanical or mechanics, um, oftentimes think of a mechanic as someone who might work on cars or motors or generally what that boils down to is things that move. Okay? So mechanical energy is going to be energy that has to do with movement. Officially the definition is the sum of energy due to position and movement. So mechanical energy is the sum of energy due to position and movement. Movement is our key word here. Okay, if something is moving, it has mechanical energy. Okay. Um, I'm going to use this space down here for some examples. Remember to not judge my artwork, right? There's a reason I teach science and not art. But of course, every picture will have a label. So if you don't like my picture, you can tell what it is and just draw it better. So the first thing I'm going to draw is wind. Okay, oftentimes we don't think of wind as something that's moving, but that's exactly what that is, is moving air, right? And that'll play an important role when we talk about energy transformations. So I'm just going to draw some little whimsy lines here and label that wind. Okay. Now, if you've ever been out to um, West Texas in an open area where there's not a lot of buildings or development, you might see a big, tall wind turbine. Okay, it's a huge structure and it usually has like three different um, what we call arms on it, right? And when that wind gets in there, it pushes it and it moves those arms kind of like a big old fan. Okay, that's called a wind turbine, T-U-R-B-I-N-E, okay? So that wind turbine, the movement of those arms is mechanical energy. Our next example is hydropower, um, and hydro means water, okay? So if you've ever seen a dam, it's like a big concrete structure, has a couple different openings in it, and then water flows through it. I'm going to add some color here just so you can tell I'm talking about water. So you have water is like at the top and then it starts flowing through each of these openings, okay? And the movement of that water is what we call hydro power. H-Y-D-R-O-P-O-W-E-R. Then, um, my last example, I'm going to draw a bicycle. This is where you can't judge my artwork. Okay? So a bicycle or a car or anything that is moving right, would be considered mechanical energy. Here's my seat and my handlebars over here. Again, don't judge my drawings. All right. So that's mechanical energy. Anything that is moving is an example of mechanical energy, or it has 
mechanical energy. Now, the R, right below that, stands for radiant energy. Radiant energy. Okay. Radiant energy is defined as energy that moves in electromagnetic waves. Okay, so radiant energy, energy that moves in electromagnetic waves. Another term for radiant energy is light energy. Okay, so anything that's giving off light is going to be an example of radiant energy. One of the first examples we probably think of is the sun, okay, which is absolutely correct. Okay, there's my sun. Um, another example could be a campfire, um, a fire in an oven, anything that is, is fire related as that's giving off of light. So I'm going to draw a match. End of the match. Again, I'm going to try to add some color here. And a little bit of a flame. There's my match. And another example of something that's giving off of light or radiant energy is a flashlight. off button and then those lines are representing the light coming off. So last example is a flashlight. Okay. If we move on to the bottom of this page, the S stands for sound energy. Sound energy. And you might be familiar with the term sound, okay? So when we're talking about sound energy, that's just defined as energy through moving particles um, that we can hear, right? If it's making a sound, we know that it's making a sound because it's something that we can hear. So, energy through vibrating particles that we can hear, okay, and that's sound energy. Um, some examples would be music, okay, we got some music notes here. Music, um, talking, right, if you're talking or making noise, sound is coming out of your mouth. So, draw a little person here, and a little sound bubble, okay, for talking. And then, if you're in band, if you think about any of the instruments that you play, right, um, <clears throat> those are producing a sound. I'm going to draw a drum. Maybe I'll try. And there's my drum. Okay, so that's all for our first three types. Mechanical, radiant, and sound. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move over to page seven. And I'm going to continue those lines over here so that this page is also divided into four sections. So wherever I had the lines on page six, I'm just going to continue them here on page seven, so that now I have four sections on page seven. Remember we titled, part of the title of these pages was Mrs. Scent, M-R-S-C-E-N-T. On page six, we talked about the M-R-S. We talked about mechanical, radiant, and sound energy. So on this page, we're gonna talk about C-E-N-T, okay? So if you wanna set that up, 
we're going to have C, E, N, and T. Okay. So again, Mrs. Scent is just a way to remember the different forms, kind of a way to help you remember the seven different kinds. All right. So if we go back up to the C in Mrs. Scent, the chemical energy okay, is what we're going to talk about here. Chemical energy. Now, when we think of the word chemical, I know oftentimes we think of like dangerous liquids or potions or anything that may be used in science, um, and it's not always about that. Okay, Remember when we talked about our unit about chemistry, we talked about different um, elements and how each element had certain atoms, and the atoms could be bonded together, right? We could create compounds out of the different elements, like water was hydrogen atoms bonded with oxygen atoms, okay? So that's what this is talking about here. Chemical energy is energy that is stored in chemical bonds and released through chemical reactions. And we know a little bit about those from our chemistry unit as well. So chemical energy is energy stored in chemical bonds and released through chemical reactions. Okay. One common example we don't think about a whole lot with as being related to chemicals, but this is where energy is stored, is food. Okay. As humans, or any animal really, we are getting our energy that we use um, through food. So here's some pizza and an apple or a cherry, whatever you want that to be. Um, another way that energy um, is stored as chemical energy is in a battery. Okay. Do we have like a plus and a minus for our battery? Also, coal, okay, um, I think in elementary school you talked a little bit about coal as an energy source, and we'll do that in our next unit, but um, energy is actually stored there um, until it's burned off and until it's used as energy. Another example is gasoline or fuel, right, like you put in a car, okay, so you have like at the gas pump here. just in case we don't know what that is, right? And then we have like a little hose and on the handle where the gas comes out. Okay. So these are four examples of chemical energy or where energy is stored in chemical bonds and released through chemical reactions. The E stands for electrical energy. And I know that you probably recognize the word electrical or electricity. Okay. Um, electricity is just the flow or the movement of electrons, right? And I think you can name a lot of things that are powered by electrical energy. We define it as energy from the flow of an electrical charge. electrical energy, energy from the flow of an electrical charge. So that's anything um, basically that has a plug, right? We know that there's going to be energy flowing through that. Anything that has to go into um, an electrical outlet, right? There's going to be energy flowing through there. And um, our last example is going to be lightning. Okay, lightning is caused from um, a flow of, of electrons or an electrical charge. Okay, so there's my 
the lining. If we move down to the N, N stands for or represents nuclear energy. Nuclear energy. We'll talk a little bit more about nuclear energy when we talk about um, the energy resources in our next unit. Um, but for now, we're going to define nuclear energy as energy stored within the nucleus of an atom. So when we talked about atoms in our chemistry unit, right, the building block of, of all things, the middle part, the inside part of an atom is called the nucleus, and that's actually where we get the word nuclear, okay, if you look how similar it is to nucleus. So I'm going to draw a picture of that atom, okay, um, what we often use as a representation. In the middle is where we have the nucleus, okay, and then you've probably seen this example where we have a couple of rings outside, that's where our electrons move. Okay, so that middle piece right there, that is the nucleus. Okay. There are plants, like nuclear power plants, that harvest this energy or get this energy out of the nucleus of an atom. And oftentimes what we see, like visuals of that, um, we see nuclear reactors. So I'm going to write nuclear reactor. And that usually just looks like a big um, structure that oftentimes has like steam or looks like kind of like a smoke coming out the top. Okay, and that's just a byproduct of that energy that's stored in the nucleus. Okay, we don't see a whole lot of everyday examples of nuclear energy, so we're going to limit it to these two. Um, but we'll talk more about it when we talk about um, transformations in the next pit stop. And then last at the bottom, the T stands for thermal energy. Um, if you think about the word um, thermal, think about thermometer or temperature, it has to do with heat. Okay. This is simply defined as energy from heat. We're also going to go ahead though and say that it's, it comes from moving particles. in an object. Okay. The sun, even though we used it earlier as an example of radiant energy because the sun does give off light, also the sun gives off heat. Okay, so it counts also as an example of thermal energy. Um, we talked about, <coughs> kind of earlier I mentioned like a campfire. Okay, but if we had some firewood here, and as that's burned and fire is created, we know that that gives off heat. Okay, here's my flames. Okay. And um, thermal energy, often used for cooking, Oh, let me label this one as fire, just in case you couldn't tell. The last one, um, thermal energy used in cooking, we can use a stove. Okay, so if we have our stove, this might be hard to draw, I'm not sure why I picked this as an example. <laughs> All right, so the top part, we have like our four burners and then we have like our oven part down here, okay? So a stove is our last example of thermal energy.